In this video, we're going to talk about how many bonds each element makes in the elements that are commonly used in organic chemistry. So the elements that are commonly used are going to be hydrogen, carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, sulfur, and then fluorine, chlorine, bromine, and iodine. Now, to begin, hydrogen always has, usually has one bond, so it's going to form one bond. It's kind of an exception. Not that other ones are not going to have one bond, but hydrogen is just very small atom and has one proton, so it can really exert a small amount of force on electrons with its own pr one proton. Carbon, I'm going to draw kind of a table here. The group that it's part of in the periodic table is going to be group 4A. Nitrogen is going to be group 5A. Oxygen and sulfur are in 6A. And then the halogens here are going to be in 7A. And these are called the calcogens, by the way. The number of valence electrons, so valence electrons is the number of electrons that these elements are going to have in their out outermost energy level. Carbon has four, nitrogen has five, oxygen and sulfur have six, the halogens have seven. So as you can see, the number of valence electrons corresponds with what group they are in on the periodic table. You just take away the A and you have the number of valence electrons. Now, most of these non-metal elements want to have eight electrons in their valence shell. And each covalent bond that they make is going to add one electron to their valence shell. So if they all want eight electrons in their valence shell, how many bonds are each of these going to make? Carbon has four valence electrons in its neutral state. If it wants four more, it's going to form four bonds. Nitrogen is going to want three more because it already has five. So it's going to form three bonds. Oxygen has six. It wants two more to get to eight, so it's going to form two bonds. The halogens are going to want one more electron, so they're going to form one bond. Now, how about the idea of lone pairs? Every bond that these elements are going to make, so let's say we have a carbon-hydrogen bond. This bond right here is going to be made up of two electrons. So this is basically equivalent to two electrons. So every bond is going to take one electron. It's going to use two electrons, sorry. The leftover electrons are going to be left over as lone pairs. So how many lone pairs are each of these elements going to have in their neutral state? Well, carbon has four bonds. And if each bond takes up two electrons, that means it's using eight electrons to make bonds. So it doesn't have any extra electrons to create any lone pairs. So carbon has zero lone pairs. Nitrogen is using th six of its electrons to make three bonds because it needs two of its electrons for each bond. So it's going to have two electrons left over. And when you have a lone pair, it's going to be two electrons next to one another. So since nitrogen has two electrons left over, it's going to have one lone pair. And then for oxygen and sulfur, it's going to be two lone pairs, and the halogens are going to have three lone pairs. And if you want to go over the same information for hydrogen, hydrogen is group in group 1A, has one valence electron, um, it's going to actually wants two valence electrons technically in its valence shell, but it only has one, so it makes one bond and zero lone pairs. We can look at a few structures to actually see how this happens. So let's take carbon that's going to be attached to hydrogen, chlorine, fluorine, and bromine. 
Now, a lot of people think that the halogens uh, react similarly as hydrogen because they both make one bond, but this is not true. Hydrogen is very weak. It's not very electronegative. These halogens, especially fluorine, have a lot of protons, and they are very electronegative. And fluorine actually has three lone pairs, as we talked about, and so, do, so does bromine and chlorine. As you can see, hydrogen doesn't have any of those lone pairs. If we analyze each specific element, we can see that it has the desired number of valence electrons. Hydrogen, as we said, wants generally wants two valence electrons. If we draw a circle around hydrogen, we can see that each of these bonds, by the way, is just two electrons. So it has one, two electrons. So there's hydrogen. The bromine, usually all of these want eight. So bromine wants eight. It has one, two, three, four, five, six, and then this bond is going to be two, seven, eight. So it has its eight valence electrons, and it satisfies its octet rule. Same thing with fluorine and chlorine. Now carbon has two electrons per bond. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. It has its eight. If we look at a different structure like nitrogen triple bonded to a carbon bonded to a hydrogen you can't have these triple bonds you can also have double bonds now nitrogen has one lone pair as we talked about in its neutral state if we draw a circle around all of the bonds and lone pairs around hydrogen we can see that or sorry it's nitrogen we can see that it has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight electrons. So once again, usually it has eight. Uh, carbon's going to have eight because one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Another example we can go over would be. You can just look at water. Now, oxygen obviously wants, as like all the other ones, eight electrons in its valence shell. If we look at this, it has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And the same is true. For sulfur, sulfur reacts very similarly to oxygen, and the halogens are just going to be almost identical in their uh, bonding. They're not going to be the same in their nuclear properties, but their chemical properties are pretty similar to one another because they're in the same group in the periodic table. So that's it for this video. I hope it was helpful. Thank you for watching.